Righto, Tellio there, champs. Now let's see how the XPS 17 compares to the Razorblade 15, the XPS 15, the MacBook Pro 16, and some other gaming laptops as well. Now, if you guys are new around here, come on, sub up, join the wood chain, hit that bell, ding a ling a dong, and uh, in the description, I have recommended RAM and SSD to upgrade laptops. And also in the description, if you want to upgrade from Windows Home to Windows Pro, check out the description. I've got a discount code, it's really cheap. You can also get Office 2019. Of course, this is not a gaming laptop, but it has a graphics card. Let's game. And I do have to say here that I'm actually really impressed with this. How thin, how light this thing is. That vapor chamber inside really does make a difference. And it's, you know, quite a bit better than the XPS 15 in terms of thermals and how much power it can sustain. And of course, you'd expect that a bigger laptop and having a vapor chamber and all, but yeah, it's really good. Now we'll have a little chat about it. We're gonna run through the benchmarks. They'll be coming compared to all those laptops I mentioned before. And of course you can see the telemetry and thermals on the screen. Let's talk about that for a sec. Temperatures, well in control. I didn't see any temperatures really going into the 90s other than, you know, briefly just touching there. And that was more along the lines of when it was sort of boosting. I'll try and put a video up right now where you can see that actually happening. You'll see that it's at 45 watts, which isn't in its steady state, and the temperatures will get into the 90s and the clock will go down from you know 3.9 down to 3.5. That was only happening in its boosting state and only in Battlefield 5, of course. Once it got locked into its sort of steady state, which is about 35 watts CPU, 50 watts GPU, then it wasn't really throttling or anything like that at all. It would stay steady at those sort of temperatures which were you know cpu in the 80s and the former mentioned sort of power so that's pretty good when you think about it 35 watts cpu 50 watts gpu in a thin and light premium package with temperatures well in check the actual noise of it it's just over 52 decibels around there so it's not super like gaming laptop loud like some of them can be but it's marginally louder than the xps 15 or the macbook pro 16 and actually around the same as the razor as well because the Razer is actually fairly quiet for a gaming laptop. Skin temperature was fine, no issues there. Now the model I have here is the i7-10750H, which is 6 cores, 45 watt part, GTX 1650Ti, which actually is really fast in this. I'm actually impressed with the 1650, it goes harder than I thought it would. And of course being in this XPS 17 it goes harder than the XPS 15. Because the XPS 15 in its power limited stage, which is around 15 watts CPU, 40 to 50 watts GPU, it can sometimes do 40 40. It just seems to be arbitrary with the XPS 15, but you're looking at about 65 watts on the XPS 15 total package once all the boost is over. MacBook Pro 16, you're looking at about 70 75 watts. The XPS 17, you're looking at about 85 watts. So you can see there, it's going to scale like that. What about battery drain? Well, I got a tiny bit of battery drain. It is a 130 watt package. You seen in yesterday's video if you watched that. It would boost up to 184 watts when you're boosting CPU and GPU at the start. Okay, 184 watts. It's a 130 watt brick. It's going to drain from the battery at that point. But remember, this is a boost stage. Boost stages don't last that long. So coming down to 85 watts, it's going to be on the limit, right? Usually something with a 2060 in it. And if you want to know what the 2060 model would perform like in this XPS 17, sort of look at the tough in the benchmarks. It'll be close to that, maybe a bit less. But when it comes to battery drain, I told you, the little tiny bit of battery drain when I was gaming. Jared from Jared's Tech, you probably know who he is. He was saying he wasn't getting battery drain until he increased the power limit. I have people in the comments saying they have a 2060 in the 8-core model. The first one drained from the battery, got a replacement unit, and it was fine. There was no power drain. So he's saying... It's not the power brick. Notebook checker saying it's the power brick. The power bricks aren't supplying enough power and that could be a thing, right? Just because your power brick says it's 130 watts doesn't mean it supplies 130 watts. It might supply 140 watts. It might supply 110 watts. But with this 130 watt package, it's going to be running really at the higher end of the efficiency. What I mean by that is, you know, 85 watts out of a 130 watt package plus then you've got to, you know, supply, you know, the screen with power, etc. 
It's going to be marginal there. But you've got to be careful what you wish for here because the only solution to this is adding a 180 watt power brick and then you're going to have a barrel charger. This is a custom USB-C charger. It's 130 watts. USB-C is only supposed to do 100 watts. So I'd rather have this USB-C and I like how it is. I like how it performs. As you can see in the benchmarks, the same specs as the XPS 15 I tested. And yeah, it is quite a bit faster than most of the benchmarks and the thermals. Well, the thermals on the XPS 15 were fine anyway. Like it was only in the 60s when it's power limited. And even when it was 40 watts CPU, 40 watts GPU was only in the 80s. So the XPS 15 can do more. Hopefully in a new BIOS they fix that and they give it more power. Then I expect the difference between the XPS 17 and the XPS 15 to be a lot closer. But certainly as it is now, you you know, 85 watts versus, you know, 65 watts. There's a big difference there. And this is the thing, right? These are gaming loads. They're not realistic for what this laptop is supposed to do. It's supposed to be for content creation. And it's good that it can boost up to 180 watts. Going to drain from the battery at that point. But who cares? When you're doing a filter in Photoshop, that's what you want. It's not going to be using CPU and GPU like a game will. It's not going to be like a gaming load. So you probably won't experience battery drain. It's going to really slow low display i think it's 45 milliseconds it's a high quality display wide color gamut it's made for content creation but gaming on it looks awesome it really does and by the way that is a recorded scene it's actually recorded from this xbs 17 and it's playing externally on that 144 hertz 1440p monitor from gigabyte have two of those in the house have a 1080p model as well I will be reviewing those soon, so make sure you stay tuned for that. So yeah, I do have to say I really enjoy playing on this. It looks awesome on this display, 16x10 display. It's not gaming laptop noisy. The temperatures are well in control, especially once it goes down to its settled state. And stay tuned for my content creation review compared to the XPS 15, MacBook Pro 16, even the Razer. I've got to say... You know, you forget it's a 17-inch pretty quick. And I really do like this thing, and yeah... I think I'm going to have to get one of those 2060s in to see how we go here. Anyway, make sure you watch the Red Dead run at the end so you can see the thermals and, you know, the performance there. But stay tuned for more XBS 17 content. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.